All right, so I just wanted to go through the um, Castle Creations data logging, the, the, their graph program. Um, a lot of times you see people put up a graph and, and it's just a, like a, a hot mess of information. Uh, and then down the bottom is where you get all the peaks. So you can't really analyze it that great because you're just seeing a whole bunch of information and you don't know was it was the first run, second run, the drive up, the drive back or whatever it was. So generally when I make a run, um, I make a pass, I turn off the EEC and then I save the data and then clear it. Uh, when you turn on and off the EEC, you create a session. Uh, and we'll show you a, a session. I'll load one up now. Um, I think this might be one. So that's the single session. Should be tests. So that's three sessions in there. So uh, this is the EC turned on, then I've turned it off. You see session two. This is the second session. So this is the second time I turn the EC on. And then I turned it off and then turned it back on. And then this is the third session. Um, to see the data just for one session, you go to your sessions, choose a session, select which session you want to look at. And now that's just the data from the one session. Now what it's showing here is the, this is a particular drag setup. So I've got a burnout and then I've actually got the run. So if I want to look at the run, what I can do is zoom in. So you see my mouse is up here. I left click and then create a box around the area I want to zoom into. And then now I actually get a better look at the data, just, just the information that I need. Something like that. So what I'll do, I'll go back to my other log. And also save all my information about it in the uh, in the notes section. And again, we're at, out. And this one again, because I, I turn it on and off every time and I clear the logs, I only see one session. So my logs are always quite clean. And then if I also uh, go to my uh, notes, I can list down all the information about the um, the car. So what gearing I ran, what um, timing was on the ESC, uh, if I had particular tyres, or I was testing something in particular for this, I'd list it all down. So anything to do with the motor and that run, I'd, I'd write it in the notes. Um, so the other thing is to is to make sure that you get the, your layout set up or your, your data the way you want to read it. Um, I'm in Australia, so I'll use Celsius, and I can change that by the temperature setup, Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, I like to see my power in horsepower, and the RPM is quite key. So when I run mine, I'm only interested in the motor shaft speed. I don't really want to know anything else about gearing and all that kind of stuff because if you pick your gearing, all you're going to know is, for instance, a Typhon has a center has a center shaft, and you select the spool as the um, the main gear, and the T from the pinion as your motor pinion. All you're going to know is the speed of your center shaft. Then there's another re reduction on the diffs. So you can add all this kind of in and it'll give you wheel speed. But then wheel speed's relevant as well because is wheel spinning, is it ballooning? You know, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. I only really want to know about my motor shaft speed. So I use one-to-one -one gearing. I don't really do anything with the with the KV, but I pick the particular motor pole. So in this particular motor was a four pole. So I go OK. Now I've got 60, 61,000 RPM. Now if I go to two pole, I get a little bit different. 100 and, what's that, 122,000 RPM. 
So you want to make sure we get the right RPM. So we're going to select the light poles. Now the other key thing is graph smoothing. Um, so if I zoom in on this, you can see it's not very clean. There's all these little ups and downs and all these little jumps and all that kind of stuff. You know, so for when you're reading it, it doesn't look really cool. But your numbers are actually really accurate. When you take a note of my, my RPM, now if I go to my um, view and I turn on graph smoothing, let's make it high. So I'll zoom in again. Now it looks nice, you know, nice and clean, and it shows that. You know, it's looking, looking a lot better. But note my RPM now. It's showing now, you know, what was that 10,000 uh, less RPM? Um, my amps, all those sort of stuff, details are so because graphs moving by nature is about um, just taking out points of information and averaging out. So you're going to average out less of what your, peak and, your peaks and lows are. So to get the most accurate information, we disable graphs moving. So when we're looking at the graph, we want to make sure that our trigger pull hasn't got this little lift here so that's not good that little blip right at the end that should have continued off up here um, but realistically in this run it's not going to make a difference because my ESC was at a hundred percent when it comes here you can see it's up there so that little blip at the end isn't actually affecting anything um, all that is is actually a bad calibration on the radio so my trigger is still pulling in when my ESC is actually already at 100% um, my ripple down the bottom my milliamps growing up here uh, I see my my horsepower and my current coming up and the important thing I also see is my voltage sag so this is how much pretty much RPM I'm losing because my batteries can't supply the voltage and then I have my RPM up here and it's kind of holding sort of steady along the top there so it's kind of maxing out where it is at the top there so but my RPM sort of my my amps are dropping dropping off just you know they're peaking and dropping off so they're not really continuing to push a little bit more so there's probably an opportunity to add another the tooth there, try and push that, push both of these up a little bit higher. Um, so pretty much that's what it comes down to when, when I'm reading the graph. I make sure I, I zoom in, I make sure I turn my graph smoothing off, I make sure I have my gearing to one to one and I have the right pole count and then I you know select the select the session that I want to run I zoom in and then I record any notes about that run in the uh, in the note section. All right, thanks for watching.